Good morning. It is uh, October 2nd, 2019. I'm going to be doing a webinar tomorrow on October 3rd for the uh, Insider Club. And uh, I use a program called Max2 to, to uh, divide up my screen into different areas. Uh, some of you who have tried it have uh, been having a problem. And uh, I, I, it works fine for me. But um, if it does not work fine for you, I don't really have uh, answers for that. You'll just have to uh, contact the developer. But let me show you how it works for me. And uh, then we'll uh, get on with it. I'm not going to uh, create a very long video today. Uh, you can join the uh, webinar tomorrow if you're a member of the Insider Club. And I'll show you how I'm going to... Uh, or how I do use Max2 for market and stock analysis. If you're interested in uh, Max2, just go to max2.net. You don't have to put the uh, EN in there. I just go to max2.net, and you can try it for free to see if it works for you. Okay, I uh, currently uh, have Max2 running on my uh, computer. This is uh, I'm running Windows 10. And if you're running Windows 7, it may work a little bit differently. I'm not sure. But I used it on Windows 7 before uh, I uh, upgraded to Windows 10, and it worked just fine. You can see that it's uh, working, running right here, Max 2. This is my current lay layout. I have the um, warehouse down here. I have a monthly chart, a weekly chart, and a daily chart. And you can see that I have the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, composite up here. It's down 132.72 points uh, right now. Let me refresh that. I think it's current. And we'll soon find out. With uh, the three charts open, it takes a little longer to update. Uh, one thing about uh, the uh, uh, NASDAQ, uh, you'll get your uh, end of day uh, volume uh, when you do the download. Uh, intraday volume is not provided uh, using Thinkorswim. I, run, I am running Thinkorswim in the background. I'm going to go in here and uh, go under my intraday options, and I want to change this to manual because uh, I don't want it uh, dragging down the... Uh, the screen, or I should say slowing down the screen as I'm doing this video. If you're using uh, Thinkorswim uh, with uh, HGSI, it's a wonderful combination because uh, uh, we get the intraday quotes. And uh, as most of you probably know by now, uh, TD Ameritrade followed suit and they're going to uh, commission free trades on stocks and ETFs. Uh, Options will still be $0.65 cents per contract, but there aren't going to be any assignment fees, which uh, uh, saves quite a bit of money if you uh, ever uh, sell uh, naked puts and so on and uh, get assigned on a stock that you want to own anyway. But if you look at this, you can see that the uh, NASDAQ is trading near the low of the day. Uh, the weekly chart uh, looks bad. The monthly chart shows you how difficult this market has been over uh, the last several months. It just cannot clearly break past resistance. It tried to here about, uh, well, that was uh, three three months ago. We're into October now, so we're getting a new bar. And uh, it just uh, didn't have the... Uh, the demand to break it uh, past resistance. Anyway, I like to use this view for uh, market and stock analysis to get a long-term perspective on what's happened. And you can see that the, the, the comp has really struggled over this time frame. Now, this is today's action. I am using my top-down analysis, Major Markets Plus, intraday under a top-down process top-down process views for market analysis so we can see what the long term has done the long term has stalled 
the weekly has stalled. It's made several attempts to break out and the daily chart looks absolutely absolutely horrible because we're stuck in this um, wide trading range. Next, I want to change my layout. I want to show you how simple this is. I'm going to select, uh, I right mouse click, change regions. This is the current regions. Uh, you don't have to have the exact uh, numbers that I do. You can see that mine don't match exactly. But this is what I'm currently using. Now, if I want to load a preset, these are my two primary views. Uh, two on the right, which is two charts on the right, plus the warehouse. And I also use this one, which I, I just showed you. No, I just showed you this one right here. But uh, this one, if I want to show a 78-minute chart from Thinkorswim, I'll load that one. But these are my two primary views for HGSI. So I'm going to change to this. I just click on it, and this is what the screen is going to look like. I'll click on Use Regions. I want to get rid of my monthly chart. I want to drag the warehouse up here. See if I can do this. I usually can just click on the the um, bar up here and it goes there. See I'm just double clicking with the left. Uh, sometimes I have to do it a couple of times. Left mouse button. And now I have a daily and a weekly chart here. And I have my warehouse view over here. Very simple. What I like about this is if I am look, want to look at a longer warehouse view, if I want more information in the warehouse, uh, this comes in very handy. And if I uh, am, uh, can work with two charts rather than three, this works out. It's very easy to switch from uh, weekly to monthly. Just go back and forth. And then I can look at a lot of other charts too. And I'm going to go uh, into that when I uh, do the uh, webinar tomorrow. Now, when I use this view here, uh, and what I like about it, I'll just uh, show you very quickly. I'm going to uh, choose the group. And I'm just going to go down here to Broad Market Indices. And then I need to change my view. I'll drop down to the, uh, well, let me use a quick pick. You can see it better. I'll drop down to the number three folder, top down process views for HCS I index analysis. And uh, I'll go to number three. And uh, I get a breakdown of what is happening in the indexes. I'm sorted on raw combo, and this sorts on advancers versus decliners. You can see how bad it is today. Uh, this was updated uh, just before I uh, quit updating automatically, and I rebuilt the indexes. And the strongest group is small cap institutional index, but there are 100 and 42 advancers and 589 decliners. So it just shows you how bad this market is. And if I want to look at a chart or charts, I can see uh, what is happening here. This uh, has uh, broken down below the low on here. What is the worst? It's utilities followed by transportations. transportation. Let's look at the S&P 500. Uh, 30 advancers, 434 decliners. It's uh, pretty bad. OK, so I don't need all this real estate for this. But if I go down into the 50% All Stocks Institutional Index, I can change to the index group. And it will show me a long list of stocks. I'll have to change my view, though. So I'll just. Uh, Go down to uh, stocks, scorecard number seven, scorecard stocks, intraday from the indexes. And you can see that uh, the stronger stocks come to the top of the list because I'm using my uh, intraday effort versus result. And I can see exactly where some of the strength is. If I want to isolate the ups versus the downs, 
I uh, scroll down to my number four folder and go in to the subfolder number one scorecard views stocks up and down and go to number one these are the stocks that are up today and you can see that under the all stocks institutional that there are 299 stocks up today that are up today and how many are down 1815 what do i mean by all stocks institutional well these stocks are at least 50 percent owned by institutions and you can see it's overwhelmingly negative so i can just flip back and forth between these see the strongest stocks and the weakest stocks these are the stocks that are down the most that is my uh, strong momentum down combo and these are the stocks that are up the most based upon uh, the criteria used in my combo ranking i'll get this out of the way let's just take a look at progenics pharmaceuticals it's an inexpensive stock you can see that uh, in the weekly chart it's been bouncing around here been building a base and uh, it's every time it's tried to break out it's failed it's trying another breakout here looking at this as a fractal chart this daily chart builds on the weekly chart so the past uh, uh, two days october 2nd and uh, i'm sorry october 1st and october 2nd these two are represented by this weekly chart so i'm looking at at this stock using two of the three fractal charts that i use actually it's uh, two of the four if i'm using a 78 minute chart in thinkorswim if i want to look at the monthly chart i just come down here and you can see that it's it's done very little over that time frame it's building a base but for some reason today it is up uh, 5.05 percent on a extremely weak market day with the uh, the comp uh, just off of its lows if it breaks uh, uh, long-term support here I'm afraid we're in for a uh, a uh, strong fall let's take a quick look here going to open this up so I can get to the spectrum analyzer you can see that it is not the only biotech stock that's up in fact that is the largest group today followed by REITs and specialty pharma interesting on such a weak day I'll just drop down here to the stocks that are down let's take a look at that spectrum analyzer banks are leading the way and REITs uh, a lot of REITs that are down to application software a lot of biotechs down to you really uh, need to go in and uh, uh, this is just for a quick read uh, comparing the two you really need to uh, to dig down and look at individual charts but uh, interestingly enough uh, well this is uh, no surprise on a weekday let's take a look at Adobe I'll bring it up in the chart and uh, I'll get this out of the way and then I'm going to click on the warehouse and it locates Adobe for me I change to the industry group you can see these are all application software if you see these stocks these blank areas that just means that uh, thinkorswim doesn't support them so which ones are are down the most something called glow point Cladera is down big. I'm going to go back here. If I click on the warehouse view again, it locates Adobe for me. It's only down 1.86%. 
but it has really broken down since uh, earnings were reported uh, back in this area. Yeah, it got up in the 300. I'll put a crosser on here so we can get a fairly precise reading. I think earnings were reported here and then it moved higher, but from this point, which was about 3. 313.11 it says all the way down to where it currently is. Uh, that is a, a, a pretty good drop. I'm going to hold my shift key, open this up, hit my alternate A key. I'm going to draw from this point down to the current price. And if you look down here at the bottom, that's down 14.5% over 52 periods. Uh, a painful experience for anybody who bought the breakout on Adobe. So uh, you can see how I use these layouts. Let's just go, Joe. I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied. I'm going to change regions. I'm going to uh, load a preset. I'll uh, I'll just load this one to show you that I do use it. Uh, use region. See if I can quickly move these around. Get rid of the designer. Double click on that. Double click on that. New charting window. And the monthly just happens to come up. Yeah. There we go. And then, uh, See if I can uh, locate that. Uh, here's a quick chart, a 70-minute uh, chart. A D B E, and you can see that uh, on the 70-minute chart, Adobe is uh, has been falling. Where my moving averages cross over up at 281, and it's uh, down to 266. So. Uh, this is how I can use real-time quotes, uh, not only, or five-minute quotes anyway, or whenever I hit F5 in um, HGSI, and then I get real-time down here. I'm going to do a quick update by holding my F5 key. It, uh, when there's three charts open, it does take a little while. That's why I uh, sometimes prefer that uh, two-chart layout. And then if I want to change this chart, quickly go up to make sure I'm on intraday charts and click on the daily VPA chart. This gives me uh, the current information on Adobe. Uh, volume is running 25% above the 90-day uh, moving average, and you can see that it's down 2.3% today and trading at 21.03% of its daily range, and it had a 0.56% gap down. So not looking good on Adobe right now. If I want to quickly flip back to this one, it uh, it's very easy to move around. I'll be doing... Uh, a lot of this in the uh, webinar tomorrow. I'll be sending out a notice here pretty soon. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, these um, programs uh, work well together. It just makes it easy to uh, set up your screen and uh, do various kinds uh, of analysis.